Hi, my name is Josephine Moreno, and I'm the Graduate Diversity Director in the Arts and Humanities at UC Berkeley. And today we're going to talk about the Statement of Purpose uh, and how to write one. So as the Graduate Diversity Director, I assist students who are interested in writing, or excuse me, who are interested in applying to graduate school. Uh, and so today that's why we're going to address this particular issue of writing the Statement of Purpose. It's an essay that all students have to uh, submit in their applications to graduate school. And so it's a very valuable lesson to understand and or essay to understand how to write. So we're going to start with the issue of what it is as an essay and how to go about focusing on this particular component of the graduate application. So first of all, let's talk about considering it as a goal. What is the overall goal of this particular essay? Well, uh, you want to be admitted to graduate school. And so uh, you have an opportunity to be admitted, whether it's Berkeley or it is uh, Stanford or whatever school. You have a choice or a variety of different colleges and universities that you want to be admitted to. So you want to identify those particular goals and think about it uh, in terms of your academic preparation uh, and the completion of this application is a part of it. So the value that you place on uh, applying to graduate school is in part this value and the statement of purpose is a part of it and a part of the total application uh, materials. So we're going to uh, think about that statement of purpose as the overall uh, application um, packet. So what is it? It's an essay that is written by all applicants. And uh, we put a, a premium, on, premium on it because it is uh, a qualitatively something that you write and you submit to us. So you have full control of this particular essay. And uh, I would say that it is an essay that uh, you submit as an academic biography. And uh, as um, from UC Berkeley's point of view, you uh, have to think about different criteria you're going to include. It should be an example of your best writing. Uh, and also, you need to personalize it for the program that you're writing. Um, too. And you should also allow yourself plenty of time to write this particular essay. Um, at the last minute, it doesn't always um, do the, uh, you credit. And um, some people feel that you should introduce this essay with um, a really unique introduction. Uh, that is pretty much up to you. Uh, but I would suggest that you have two or three people to uh, take a look at it, uh, read your drafts as you're writing it. So in preparation for writing the Statement of Purpose, what I would suggest is that you gather all of the materials that you need for this particular essay. And let's think about some of those uh, materials that you might need. They would include perhaps uh, your transfer, uh, excuse me, your, your transcripts. And they would include uh, materials, for example, that uh, you might draw upon, maybe papers that you've written, uh, perhaps your thesis. You might think about uh, other kinds of experiences like lab experiences, uh, field work that you've done, independent uh, study, uh, for example. Have you been um, away during the summer doing summer research, language study? So gather up all of those materials that are evidence of all of those experiences, those enriching experiences. So you have all of that information in front of you. And uh, then, read the instructions. <laughs> and it sounds rather simple, but I can say that many times essays are written without really reading the instructions of what that particular school wants in a particular essay. So if you have all of that ready, uh, all, of those, uh, all of that information and the instructions, then you're ready to um, actually start. So uh, you're ready to start one statement of purpose, and uh, you have plenty of time. 
And what I suggest now is let's take a look at, for example, the statement of purpose for UC Berkeley. Here's the instructions. So they indicate to describe your aptitude and motivation for graduate study, uh, your preparation for the field of study that you're interested in, your academic plans, your research interests in your chosen area of study, your future career goals, and uh, then it says be specific about why UC Berkeley uh, would be a good intellectual fit for you. So here are the instructions, and I would suggest that whether it's UC Berkeley or it's another school, that uh, if you're applying, you might make a note of what are the key points here. And so you want to deconstruct the instructions, for example. And that's what we're going to do now. So here we go. Here are part of the instructions, and it indicates here that you describe your aptitude and your moti motivation uh, for graduate study in, the, in your area of specialization. Well, what does that mean? It means uh, your preparation for rhetoric, your preparation for mechanical engineering, your preparation for public policy, and what drives you for graduate school. That's what they're asking. So you want to share with uh, the readers what uh, you have done to prepare yourself for graduate study in that field for UC Berkeley. And then also, uh, what is your area of specialization in engineering, in physics? Uh, what have you done and why, why are you um, interested in that particular subfield? That's the question here. So what, how are you going to address those particular questions? That's what the instructions are asking you to address. So um, here I'm saying in, in uh, my uh, suggestions is that you weave in your motivation for studying in the field. So how do you do that? You highlight your coursework, uh, your internships, your research. You highlight your independent study. Uh, and, and notice that I indicate highlight because, of course, in all the materials that uh, one has um, collected or all of your, your materials that you're submitting to the admissions committee, that's the depth that they have in front of the in front of them. And as the statement of purpose, what you want to do is you want to highlight what uh, you want to bring to their attention. And it may be, for example, um, on the transcript, there is a, a, an independent study. Well, only you know the depth of that independent study. So consequently, what you want to do is to highlight what was significant in that independent study. What did you learn that uh, is extra enriching or what you want to draw attention to? So that's why highlighting that independent study brings their attention to what was significant about that particular activity and uh, what, what you know about it and what you can share with them. Uh, so that's uh, something that uh, is qualitatively different. So uh, other types of ex experiences might be graduate seminars, uh, um, your experience with your senior thesis that you're working on. There are unique experiences that have enriched your undergraduate experience or maybe your master's experience. So research um, uh, experiences are very, very important uh, for you to perhaps discuss uh, in your field. And they may be extremely valuable for you to highlight, particularly uh, depending upon the research field that you're entering. And that's another point. Keep in mind who your audience is. It's very different from an undergraduate application. For example, in um, uh, the division that I represent, Arts and Humanities, there are some uh, departments or graduate units where the uh, field that you're talking about, the subfield, they really want to know uh, what your research interests are, what if you're going to discuss a project or not, and that 
uh, they really want you to talk about what kind of uh, graduate project you might bring with you and whether you, that's a good match for the Berkeley faculty. So it's very valuable for you to think that through. What is your passion in that subfield? How you arrived at that subfield in chemical engineering or mathematics or physics or rhetoric or film, or, uh, whereas another uh, department might want you to have specialties, but you don't have to particularly be focused in, in a specific area. So it's very important for you to have knowledge of that department and to do your homework about what is valuable to a specific uh, department graduate unit. Here's another part of the instructions. And again, we're going to deconstruct the instructions. And that is describing your academic plans, your research interests in your chosen area, and your future career goals. So the instructions are asking you to think through your research plans, think through what your career goals are. Is it academia, most likely, or uh, in some fields? Or do you have a desire to go out into um, uh, the private sector and go uh, and, re and uh, eventually work in uh, industry. So this is where you would have an opportunity to discuss those particular goals. So career goals, identify them as a academic or professional goals and keep in mind the uh, program that you're applying to. So for example, uh, mathematics, uh, mathematicians might tend to study pure pure mathematics or applied mathematics. Those are very, very different um, uh, subfields and tracks. So don't overlook who it is that uh, you are applying to the, the program, uh, for example. And uh, this is another part of the instructions, and it's very important. That is, be specific about why UC Berkeley would be a good intellectual fit for you. And this particular part of the instructions is asking why you're a good fit for Berkeley. And keep in mind that you're looking for a good fit in a graduate program, and we're looking for a good fit. So it goes both ways. That is that both sides are looking for a good fit. And you want to discuss why it is that uh, you're a good fit for that graduate program. And have you looked at the uh, course material courses that are taught. Have you looked at the faculty research interests, and do you are you interested in what they're doing, and vice versa? The faculty are looking at the same thing. What is it that you're interested in doing, and uh, whether those the faculty that are in that graduate unit are they do they have the same research interest? So. Uh, these particular instructions are looking at uh, whether you're a good match for the program and whether we too are a good match for you. So here's uh, some more detail about that particular point. So when you're writing your statement of purpose, I suggest that you think about what your path has been up to this point. That is, your intellectual journey. What, where have you come from? Uh, what path you've taken? Have you gone out and worked in between your undergraduate, uh, undergraduate bachelor's degree? Have you um, thought about uh, what you're going to do with your career, uh, your pursuits, your goals? and how you fit that into your statement of purpose. Because the statement of purpose is uh, a very important component of all of the materials. And um, it is uh, something that is read in the process of the admission uh, or the consideration for admission. And uh, it is uh, read by all of the faculty in the admission committee. And I also would like to say that you want to keep in mind who is your audience. And in this particular case, your audience is the faculty on the admission committee. And they can be a subset of the uh, 
faculty in the field that you are, or department that you're applying to, or they can be all of the faculty in a small department, that is. So it depends upon what graduate program that you are applying to. So uh, I suggest that you kind of keep in mind who it is that uh, the graduate program that you're applying to and who your audience is, because it definitely will be faculty, and uh, faculty who are reading your, your statement of purpose. And they're going to be thinking about whether this student is uh, a good writer or a good researcher, and what is their uh, background and preparation for their particular program. So uh, keep in mind uh, that as you are writing your statement of purpose. It also should be gram grammatically um, uh, correct. There should not be any spelling errors. As I mentioned before, it should be uh, quite a good example of writing. Um, oftentimes there is also a length um, requirement or, or um, uh, usually a can't, it cannot be very long or, or it might be limited to two pages. Uh, usually for UC Berkeley it might be two pages single spaced uh, or four pages double spaced and students always ask me that. Uh, there are also items that you should do so as not to, uh, to avoid doing and uh, these are a few of them. Sometimes they are written in the first person uh, quite a bit, and you should try to avoid that. Uh, you should not uh, talk about bad grades, but if you have kind of a hiccup in your uh, transcript, you should address that, but do so in one or two sentences and then move on. Uh, I also suggest that you don't overuse particular words. Sometimes that does happen. And also um, there's a use of multiple words, like words in, in triples, and try to avoid that. Uh, so there are a number of uh, grammar and language issues that come up. And you should ask someone who's quite good at editing to take a look at your uh, statement of purpose so that uh, you avoid some of the, the common issues that come up uh, as well. So overall, it should be very well written. It should be concise, a highlight of your uh, academic and intellectual abilities. Uh, don't make it too dense. Uh, sometimes it's so dense that by the time the faculty member has read to the bottom uh, of the, the end of the statement of purpose that they have forgotten what they read from the beginning because it's packed with so much. Uh, but uh, don't provide too much detail so that uh, they f have forgotten what they read in the beginning. So remember that the statement of uh, purpose is an insight to your intellect. And so you want to give them a good view. Thank you very much. I uh, welcome any questions that you might have that you can contact me, Josephine Moreno. I'm the Graduate Diversity Director in Arts and Humanities. And uh, good luck on your statement of purpose. Thank you.